And we are talking today about Christmas Afterglow. And we're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 20. Only one verse today, and it follows the 19 verses that we covered last week. Verse 20 says, and this is about the shepherds. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And so may God's blessing be upon this portion of his holy word that we are going to focus on for a few minutes today. I'm going to start with verse 13 where a multitude of heavenly angels it, it says uh, a multitude, the English word would be plethora. That means a lot of angels. And then it says a, a host of angels, and it should be translated an army of angels because the word there, stratia, pictures an army rank upon rank and row upon row. And so get this picture in mind, a plethora of angels rank upon rank in an, uh, a big army uh, of angels up there in the sky just filling heaven with praises and blessings. Now, that's splurging. And God does that. God splurges. He didn't just put one planet around the sun. He put a whole number of planets around the sun. He didn't make just uh, one, um, what do you call it, uh, solar system. He made a whole bunch of them, thousands, millions of them. He didn't make just a few stars. He made billions and billions of stars because that's the way God is. He splurges. And so he splurged with this multitude of angels that came to bring the good news to the shepherds. And when all of this happened, the shepherds could have looked at each other and they could have said, wow, wasn't that fantastic? Shrugged their shoulders and gone back to their sheep. They could have said, wasn't that a beautiful vision? But they didn't do that either. We are told that in verse 16, they went and they saw the child. They saw God in the flesh. They were rewarded for their going. They saw God in the flesh. There was no command of the angels to go. Did you notice that? The angels do not tell the shepherds to go. The angels just tell the shepherds what they'll see if they go. This will be a sign for you. But they had to go. And so they went. They went and they saw God in the flesh. Many today do not check out the claims of Christianity. They do not go. And if they don't go, they will not see. So the angel said, you will see a sign if you go. Faith took them to the stable. It takes faith today to see the signs. First you go, and then you will see. Amen. And then after this little lesson comes verse 20. They, they saw, and then they returned, verse 20 tells us. After the, the aftermath of a big event, often comes a low. I don't know if you remember going to camp. You go up the mountain to camp and you have a wonderful experience and you come home and it just all fades away and it's just life as usual again. After a big event comes a letdown, an anticlimax, dejection, the blahs. After the flood, Noah got drunk. After the exodus, the people started serving the Baals. After Christmas, the wrappings go out, the church attendance drops, and the credit cards come due. But it doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to have the blahs. We don't have to have the anti-climax from the high of the Christmas celebration. 
the shepherds went back to doing what they were doing. They went back to their world of sheep. They went back to life's duty to live for God. They went back with the glory of Christmas reflected on their faces. They went back with deep new emotions for we are told they went back praising and glorifying God. And in the Greek tense, it's a present active participle, which means they kept on. It was not a one-time thing. It was a present active, continuous experience. They continued to praise and glorify God. So I want to challenge you today to make the aftermath of Christmas a time of glory and praise. In other words, the time after Christmas can be an afterglow. Call it the Christmas afterglow, which will counteract the blahs and the anti-climate that Christmas can bring. So I want to do that this morning. The days after Christmas are a time to savor our experience of Christmas. These days are a time to treasure our relationship with Jesus, who was born in a manger. There is spiritual power in praise. Praise enables us to sing in our work. The shepherds returned, it says. That's a key word. They returned from the major with praise and with glorification. The, the word there is doxodzo, and it gives us our English word doxology. They were full of praises and doxology. And life's regular duties became a joy. That's what we're looking for after Christmas. We're going back to life's regular duties, but we're going back with joy because of the Christmas message. And this is the experience of others also in Scripture. For we read, after the resurrection, the disciples returned with uh, praises and glory. They felt a, a glowing in their hearts, we read in Luke chapter 24. After the ascension, when Jesus left the earth, he rose into a cloud and the, the multitude of people that were there and watched him go up into heaven, we are told, praised him with great glory. Luke 24, verse 52. They returned with great joy. And I see that most miracles result in great joy. Isn't Christmas a miracle? It's one of the miracles in our New Testament. And we can return from Christmas with great joy. I see in Luke chapter 5 where this man... He, he was lame, he was on a cot, and they tried to bring him to Jesus, but they couldn't cut through the crowds. And so they went up on the roof of this house, and Jesus was inside, and they cut a hole in the roof. And they lowered him down to Jesus so that Jesus could heal him. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. And the authorities, the scribes and the Pharisees says, nobody can forgive sins like that. Jesus says, all right then. Pick up your mat and walk. And the man picked up his mat and he walked and he left there praising and glorifying God. And the crowd that saw that did the same thing. They praised and glorified God. There was a widow of a little place called Nain. We call her the widow of Nain. She lost her only son. She's already lost her husband and now she's lost her son and they're carrying him down the road uh, in this funeral procession, procession on what they call a, a beer, a B-I-E-R. And Jesus stops the, the bearers and he looks at the woman and he looks at this dead son and he says, arise. And the son sits up on the bier. And everybody starts praising God. And he got up and he praised God as well. 
And uh, they glorified God and said, God has visited his people. There's the gathering demoniac who's out of his gourd. I mean, he is so possessed. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's lived among the tombs for years and years. And Jesus heals him. And then he wants to follow Jesus and the disciples. But Jesus tells him, no, return to uh, where you were. Well, not the the tombs, but uh, return to life and declare how much God has done for you. In other words, praise God. Go home and tell people, praise God. There was a woman who was healed on the Sabbath. She was all bent over. She couldn't straighten up. And Jesus healed her. And she straightened up and she praised God. That's in Luke chapter 13. And then there's the story of the 10 lepers. And it's uh, notable because nine of those lepers were healed and then they went away without thanking or praising God. But one of them, a Samaritan, came back to Jesus and Jesus says, was not one found to return and give praise to God except this Samaritan? And that Samaritan praised God, the outsider Not the Jews, but the outsider. Praise God for the miracle that he received. And what others have experienced, we too can experience after the Christmas season. We can also praise God. These were just people. And human nature has not changed. God has made us to praise him. Paul writes in... uh, 1 Corinthians, oops, uh, 1 Thessalonians rather, rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You want to know what God's will is? He wants us to give thanks, to praise Him, pray constantly, rejoice. And that's what He wants us to do after the Christmas season. When the The first of the year rolls around and routine settles in again. We can continue to praise him. We read in Revelation chapter 5. This is the heavenly throne room scene. And John writes, I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands singing with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all therein saying, To him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Do you get the picture? We're going to be praising God forever and ever. We might as well start now after Christmas. Let's practice praising God. And then in the 19th chapter of Revelation... From the throne came a voice uh, crying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of many thunder peals, crying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Our destiny is in heaven. Every creature there praises God. Multitudes in heaven praising God. And the word hallelujah means praise you God in Hebrew. So praise puts us in harmony with God. If we have encountered the Lord this Christmas, we too can sing in our our daily activities. We can return to life's duties To live for God, we can return after Christmas, reflected uh, Christmas on our faces. We can return with the emotions of praise and glory to God for his goodness, the goodness of his gift. Furthermore, praise makes better Christians of us. I have no doubt that the shepherds became better shepherds. 
I can't prove it. There's no scripture that says that. But you can't have an encounter with God and not be affected. And these shepherds were affected. So it's reasonable to think that praise makes better Christians of us. With uplifted spirits, we feel better and we work better. Companies, after all, play soothing music and they paint their walls with soothing colors so their workers will produce. They'll feel better and produce more. Toyota, I read, provides gardens and a time for meditation and a gymnasium and other uh, amenities for their workers so that they will feel better and work better. And a happy church will be the same way. A happy church accomplishes more for Jesus. Billy Graham's Evangelistic Association put out a, a magazine called Decision Magazine. This is many years ago. They did a survey and they found uh, 18 outstanding churches had certain things in common. And one of the 18 things in their report was this. Joy. The people liked to walk through the church doors. It was a good place to be, but it was more than a clubby atmosphere. People were talking about the Lord, telling of answers to prayer, and praising God. That's the characteristic of a, a successful church. Praising God and talking about what God has done for them. Not only did the shepherds become better shepherds, Pastors become better pastors. Deacons become better deacons. Sunday school teachers become better Sunday school teachers. Church members become better church members when they praise and glorify God. Amen. Praise is positive. Such a positive experience, positive message. It makes us think positive. And we no longer focus on the negative. It gets the poisons out of our mind. Have any of you ever had an abscess tooth? <laughs> you can't think about much else. The whole body is in sympathy with that abscess, isn't it? And that abscess must be healed before the whole body feels better. And you know, it's no different in churches. Our hearts and our minds work this way. Praise gets rid of the spiritual abscesses in our life. It fills our mind with the right things. Isaiah said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Praise gets us out of bed in the morning, singing, singing Oh, what a beautiful morning. Praise gets us up and enables us to whistle while we work. Praise makes better Christians of us. Praise enables us to sing at midnight. When the going gets tough, in our coronavirus moments, praise enables us to overcome. It was true <clears throat> of the shepherds. The shepherds were unable to keep the ceremonial laws, as I explained, I think it was last week, all those meticulous hand washings and rules and regulations and purification laws just weren't possible to keep up as a shepherd. I mean, flocks make demands on shepherds. And therefore, the shepherds were looked down upon uh, in that society, kind of like we look down upon street people today. But when they returned, overflowing with praise, social status didn't mean much anymore. And then there's Paul and Silas in prison in Acts chapter 16. We read about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. I'm not sure that's what I would have been found doing. How about you? When something bad happens at midnight, do you sing praises to God? But that enabled them to get through the ordeal because we know how bad the prisons were in that day and age. 
but they knew God was in control. And they could praise a God who was in control. Praise helps us function between our rock and hard place moments. We say we believe in God. Do we? Do we really trust him in these hard, difficult times? Or does complaining and grumbling and griping escape our lips? We say we believe in God, but do we really trust him with, when we're between a rock and a hard place? Do we really trust him in our midnight moments? Well, praise enables us to sing at midnight today. Christians today can follow suit. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise is something that anybody can do. It's not rocket science. It's not difficult. We just need to get in touch with our inner spirit and have our inner spirit full of praise. It can be done anytime, even at midnight, even after Christmas. A merchant was explaining to his pastor, when Christmas is over, it's my job to rid the store of everything Christmas overnight. And the pastor said, well, I have a bigger job. I have to keep Christmas in the hearts of my parishioners for a lifetime. Praise is God's will for us. It is a dominant characteristic of Christian life. It is a dominant characteristic of successful churches. Praise is God's will for us. The aftermath of Christmas for the shepherds was continuous glory and praise to God. In verse 13, we see how praise is something the angels do. The shepherds celebrated with the same good news that the angel proclaimed in verse 10. If you had had such an experience as the shepherds, when would you quit talking about it? The shepherds kept on praising and glorifying him. And may we live today like the shepherds forever changed, forever glorifying Jesus. Praise the shepherds gave for all that they had heard and seen. They were first ear witnesses, and then they were eyewitnesses. And they went back to their sheep, and they shared with anybody who would listen. And they praised God. If there is no praise in the after Christmas, then we probably haven't had a particularly praiseworthy Christmas. The shepherds went and they saw God in the flesh. I can't think of a more praiseworthy experience. But we can celebrate what the shepherds saw. We can celebrate God in the flesh. Jesus, who came to this earth, spent 33 years on this earth. He healed, he taught, and most of all, he died for our sins and conquered death, established the kingdom of God, and invites us to share in that kingdom with him forever and ever. And that is something to praise and glorify God about. I challenge you to make the aftermath of Christmas a time of glory and praise. In other words, the afterglow of Christmas. Heavenly Father, we thank you for so much to give glory and praise for. You have done so much in our lives. And sometimes we take our eyes off of the good things and we focus and we grumble on, on what is negative and, and what we don't like. Bring to mind those moments that we need to slip back into praise and glorify you, that we can move forward and enjoy life as you intend us to enjoy it. Thank you for this reminder from the shepherds. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.